We're uh, coming into the winter months now. Wanted to get out of the house while there was still a few daylight hours today. When changing jobs, it can take a little while sometimes to uh, readjust your sleep schedule, as it were. So, yesterday I got up at 4 p.m. Today I got up at 2 p.m. And tomorrow, hopefully, I'll be getting up at noon. Then after that, we'll, uh, we'll take it a little bit easier probably try for like 11 and then 10 or something like that but um it's definitely getting cold now oh i discovered something i'm in the uh i'm in the bounder today and this is definitely weather that requires gloves and what's weird is i could have sworn i have used the bounder before with gloves on apparently not these gloves though so you know how most wheelchair joysticks have sort of like a rubberized um, coating on the joystick itself? Well, as it turns out, um, this Bounder one has like a, like a hard plastic coating on it. And what I've figured out with at least these gloves, when I have them on, let me turn the chair off here. This palm surface here is not grippy at all. So when I try to operate the joystick, it just kind of slides around. Now, normally when I run my chair, I have my hand on the joystick like this, and the joystick is kind of right here between these two fingers. And then I just move my hand around like this to steer it. Especially with a chair like this, that has a lot of power and speed, and the way I have it tuned up, it takes some very precision operation. And I'm finding that the surface of these gloves don't provide enough frictal forces for me to accurately drive this thing. So I think what I'm gonna do is look through my, yeah, trying to get my gloves back on. I'm gonna look through my uh, inventory of gloves and see if I have a pair of them that is like non-skid in here, or maybe we'll have to plasti dip the joystick on this thing. Also, I discovered on the way down here, the utility company has decided to sink a bunch of telephone poles right into the sidewalk. And there's a number of spots where this chair barely fits through. Now, obviously this is a bounder with giant tires on it, but it's not that much wider. I mean, we're maybe two inches wider than, actually probably not even that much. It's not that much wider than a standard power chair is what I'm trying to say. And they just went ahead and sunk some telephone poles right into the sidewalk. So yeah, that's um, interesting. <laughs> so a couple of things I wanted to say. Um, I posted a video on the other channel yesterday in regards to eh, comments and other stuff like that. But the reason I post things on that old channel occasionally is, is because it's not necessarily meant for a larger audience and sometimes the discussions I have on there may be construed differently. But there is one thing I wanted to say that I didn't articulate very well yesterday in that video. It was mostly talking about a uh, volume of comments that have been coming through over the last few months. and you know, people saying like, oh, well, you're not really disabled and I've wasted all this time watching your videos and all this stuff. But the part I didn't articulate very well is it's very obvious that people leaving comments like that don't watch my videos and are not paying very close attention. Um, so if you want to watch that, it'll give you some context to what I'm saying. But it was more or less me trying to say, I don't really care. But the purpose of that video, the reason I published it, was because I wanted to illustrate that like in real life, as well as on YouTube, a lot of us encounter things and sort of, not pushback, I don't know the right word to say, but you kind of get attacked a little bit by people sometimes, like saying, oh, you're not disabled, like you don't look like you should be in that chair, you know, things like that. So I more or less just wanted to post that and say, hey, you know, we're not in this alone. And to be honest, right now, with 
everything going on, this has got to be, got to be the worst possible time to be newly injured or starting a, a new life in a chair. Just with all the stuff that's going on right now and how crazy everyone is. Um, you know, it took me probably two, three years to get to the point where I wasn't just a raging crazy person trying to force everyone to follow the rules and yelling at people and all this stuff. And I realized, you know, I seem to be angry all the time because no one's following these laws. Well, I know in Oregon in particular, there's legal ways to get around any aspect of the ADA. And now, especially with all the new stuff that's going on, I've read through the CDC's ADA accommodation stuff and the things in the state of Oregon. And I'm going to be honest, you know, if you have pulmonary issues like I have or other issues, you know, that require physical access and whatnot, um, whether it be lines outside stores and they wrap around the store and there's no curb cutouts to get to them, you're pretty much screwed. Um, you can be polite about it, but you know, there's another video I posted, uh, short story, the ruckus at Walmart. I just tried to get into the store and all these people went crazy because they let me in ahead of the line. There wasn't physically a way for me to get to the line because the curb cutouts were completely blocked. And you know, everyone's always already tired from having to stand and wait outside and line and all this stuff. So I say all this to say, you know, ordinarily I would say, yeah, you should fight for your ability to live like everyone else. And I'm not still say, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but you need to be extra careful right now. Um, everyone's on edge and the tiniest thing will set them off. Now, Portland and Oregon is, well, not all of Oregon, but Portland specifically is a really unique climate. You've got all these social justice warriors wandering around and they're looking for something to set them off. They're actively trying <laughs> to find something to be angry at. Now that sounds cynical, but if you're from here, you understand it. So at this point, I'm not even attempting to go to grocery stores. I'm not attempting to change anything. If there's the slightest whiff that there might be an issue, I just turn and leave. Now, yeah, that affects my day, it affects my life, but at the same time, it's a lot better than the alternative, you know, of all the chaos and commotion that can be called. I have had the cops called on me over, you know, some of the guidelines and stuff and trying to go into stores. They showed up and they were like, oh, well, who cares? You know, why are you? they told the manager, why are you wasting our time? Like, whatever. And, you know, they basically told the manager, hey, you have to let this guy in. I didn't wind up doing it. I wound up leaving. But again, covered in another video. I think that one was disability in the pandemic. Um, but I just wanted to articulate, you know, you're not alone. Even though you are technically, <laughs> like physically, maybe, you know, not allowed to go socialize and do things. You know, support groups that I go to for Tourette Syndrome. Uh, you know, our monthly get-togethers, the Wheel Connect, stuff like that. Everything's on hold. Nothing's going on. And... I, I, I've been discovering, as I've been out running around trying to do stuff, I'm not hard of hearing at all. Like, I have really good hearing. But with the brain injury I have, which, by the way, did not cause the Tourette's. I never said that. I've had it all my life. Um, but I found out that I rely very heavily on being able to see people's faces and their mannerisms and expressions. So the shift to everything being done with video conferencing has been really difficult. You know, I've, I've always had trouble talking on the phone. And by the way, this Hero 9 Black GoPro, having the screen on the front is great because normally I'd be turning around every three seconds to make sure someone's not walking up behind me. But now I can see on the little screen. With the TBI that I have, I never realized how much I rely on seeing people's expressions and their, their face and their mouth. Like I don't necessarily read lips, but it's extremely difficult to communicate. So, again, I say all this to say, yeah, things are difficult right now. And you're not in this alone. There's others of us out here that are having to deal with things. And, you know, who knows how long it's going to be? Who knows how long this is going to go on? But it takes a shift in your mind. You have to kind of recalibrate. And, I, you know, I've realized that over the last month or so. I need to figure out a way to be okay with what's going on. Not saying that, you know, being discriminated against is okay and right, but... It's gonna happen and you have to figure out a way to file it away in the back of your brain so that you can go about your day and not be in constant raging douchebag mode. I don't know how else to say it. Um, it's difficult.
but you got to recalibrate and you got to figure out a way to just ignore a lot of this stuff right now. But you know, as far as the communication stuff goes, people that I know, I'm able to communicate via Zoom calls and on the phone because in my mind, I, I know how they talk, I know the things generally that they say, how they react to stuff. So in my case, it's a bit easier. And you know, I've been able to kind of start doing some video conferencing stuff with people that I know, and it works out okay. So there's a lot of us out here with a lot of different abilities, a lot of different disabilities and issues and things that make this just absolutely seemingly insurmountable. And you may not figure out a way to um, make things work the way you want. But again, I don't strive to be happy. I strive to be content. Being happy all the time is exhausting and it's, it's fleeting, but just try to be content with what's going on. Figure out a way to, a way to just be okay and move on. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, um, BRB. Switched to time-lapse mode there for a minute. Someone was walking down the pathway here. I feel kind of bad. Uh, it looks like she made her way down here and wanted to hang out on this little viewpoint. But when I came down here, there was another person here and they left as soon as they saw me. And the other person saw me and just turned around and went the other way. But it, it's one of those things where social distancing and all that. Like I said, I feel bad making people move if you know they're uncomfortable with someone else around. But also it kind of works to my advantage if I want to hang out somewhere the only wheelchair accessible spot here. <laughs> All you have to do is show up and they toddle off. Uh, uh, anyways, I'm gonna run around a little bit more and this is an area that I haven't really checked out before. Nice scenery, but uh, yeah, it's gonna get dark here soon. So let's go explore a little bit more and uh, see if there's still enough light to get any video. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of go over some of that stuff and just, you know, again, you're not alone. We're all in this together. Yeah, there's a lot of pathways that I didn't know were here. Okay, this is really cool. Okay, pretty sure I found a new hangout to come to and have lunch occasionally. <laughs> There are a lot of cool areas that I have never checked out. <laughs> By the way, it is five o'clock right now. This is how dark it is. <laughs> Looks like we're headed back here just in time. Drizzle starting in Portland. Oh. So you break your headrest. Ugh. Why is this front? Why is the front screen black? Eh. Anyways, we're gonna have to do something about this glove situation. Ugh. There we go. Now the front screen's working. At least we know GoPros are still buggy. Um, yeah, I didn't open the garage quite far enough, and 
I caught the headrest on it. I don't think I broke anything, but, um, oh, cold. Oh, yeah, um, sidewalks are already dangerous enough. And now that they're covered in leaves, not recommended going down a sidewalk you have not been down many, many times when it's covered in leaves because you can't tell if a utility cover is missing. <laughs> um, but yeah, and having the joystick slip around in your hand, uh, that makes things even more sketchy. I, I made it part way back and then I just had to stop and put my glove on because the nerve pain um, yeah, it's a thing. But anyways, made it back. I'm going to sit in front of the fireplace for a little while and warm up. Oh, I meant to grab food while I was out. Oh, no, I have chicken. I cooked a bunch of chicken in the crock pot last night. Okay, so we can reheat that. All right, well, yeah, there you go. A few random thoughts for the day. Um, try not to sleep late. I'm discovering that, um... It, uh, it really screws with the psyche, especially when it gets dark now at like 4.30. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm readjusting from a different schedule. But do whatever you can to um, try and be as normal as possible, whatever that means. Uh, yeah. Anyways, have a good one. <laughs>